Or below, the Stonehenge of the North. Or below gets its name from the Anglo-Saxon Earthberg Hall, meaning Earthwork Hill, although it would have already been 2,500 years old by the time it was given this name. It was made at some point between 3,000 and 2,000 BC, a very special time period when the religion of Western Europe, particularly Britain, moved away from the funerary practices of earlier Neolithic peoples and started to cremate their dead. Circles became an important feature of these people's monuments, housing and indeed art. I want this video to be a deep dive into this beautiful monument and to the people that lived on this site, but before we get started, please take a look at this awesome t-shirt and sweatshirt I have designed to coincide with this video featuring one of R Below's majestic snapped stones. If you like this presentation and want something that is genuinely outstanding, please have a think about purchasing it from the link in the description. R Below Stone Circle lies a short drive from Buxton in the High Peak Derbyshire, England. It's England's highest market town, sited at some 1,000 feet above sea level. You get some very spectacular night skies up here. The town is known for its geothermal springs and its clean mineral water. The first inhabitants of Buxton made homes at Lismore Field some 6,000 years ago, where remains of Mesolithic timber roundhouses and Neolithic longhouses have been found. Arbolo was built in the later part of the Neolithic and was in use into the early Bronze Age. It is made up of between 50 and 52 fallen stone fragments and upright stone stumps where stones have been snapped. There would have originally been between 41 and 43 stones, with particularly big stones at the entrances, making the ring look more impressive when approached. The heaviest stones would have weighed around 10 tonnes. The stones now are all fallen. It's generally thought that this happened due to natural factors, due to weaknesses in the rock and not being sunk deep enough into the ground. As you can see, the weather up here can be quite blustery. There is no proof to say that the stones were purposefully toppled and broken, as is the case with other stone circles. There was once a debate as to whether the stones were even originally standing, but it's generally assumed that they were. Some of the stones seem to be trying to get back up, back into a standing position. I can imagine how impressive it looked when they were standing. I wonder if we could perhaps, and if it would be right to re-stand the stones, although this is a fruitless thought, as most are broken, worn, and several have been robbed in times gone by. There are four stones in the centre of the circle called a cove. They had your usual pagan offerings on, a sunflower with a plectrum stuck in the centre, which is very cool, at the eastern end of the cove, there was a grave which contained a male skeleton lying on its back, which is strange as burials from the time usually have their knees drawn up into the body, fetus-like. You can see the skull in the Buxton Museum. A large pit was found in the north-east end of the cove. The infill contains a human bone. The flat interior of the circle measures 40 metres by 52 metres. 79 by 75 metres if you include the massive earthwork ditch and bank known as a henge. These earthwork henge monuments are agreed to be more or less unique to the UK and are not found in Europe. They can be seen as an extension to the circular motif that these people of the time used so much in their building. No one really knows why they were built or what their purpose was. Ironically, Stonehenge doesn't have a proper henge as the main ditch is external to the main bank. It is only actually considered a proto-henge. Or below, on the other hand, is one of the most impressive henges still standing in the whole UK, which makes it all the more sad as to what I saw later on. The bank is currently two metres high. It may have originally been three before erosion. It most likely took several years to make. 
The ditch is 1.5 to 2 metres deep and between 7 and 12 metres wide. In 1901, excavations were made into the Arbolow banks and ditch, finding it had steep rock sides. The makers would have had to have removed around 1,500 cubic metres or 4,000 tonnes of limestone from the bedrock with little more than antler picks and then hauled the rock up the steep sides to construct the bank. It is a class 2 henge, meaning it has two different entrance ways, or at least an entrance and an exit, more or less opposite each other. When I originally visited the site around 6 or 7 years ago, there were big signs mounted telling people not to climb the ancient earthwork banks. These have since been removed and all that is left is this small, insubstantial one. While I was there, we saw several people climb these ancient banks to get a better view to take photographs. Of course, I told them to come down. A footpath has been eroded into the top of the henge, which has become deeper and deeper in recent time. It seems obvious to most that climbing these banks is probably not a good idea. If you do visit, there's no need to climb. You can get photos from above from several places. The internet is full of them. Nothing makes your photography special. All below has been photographed hundreds of thousands of times. Even Gib Hill Burial Mound nearby have the start of a few footpaths working their way over it. I have written to the National Heritage and the Buxton Museum who have brought the issue up with the team responsible for the site. I'll give you an update when I get one if you subscribe to the channel, but I do hope they get some more signage up sooner rather than later. All below also has the slight remains of a processional bank and the remains of another barrow in the same field as the stones. But the main barrow, a short walk away, is Gib Hill. Gib Hill predates the circle and was likely built in early 3000 BC, a time when the population in the peaks was relatively small. Thirteen other long barrows are found around the White Peak, but more likely than not there would have been others before they were lost to time. The Arbelow stone circle was built several hundred years after the Gib Hill was first erected. The larger site was changed again in 2000 BC in the early Bronze Age when a circular burial mound was placed atop of the Long Barrow making it the monument we see today. Another burial mound was built into the Henge Wall of our below. This is still visible. A cyst with grave goods was discovered inside. Over 500 burial mounds survive in the region although there were likely many, many more. At this point, communities would have grown significantly in size. It is from this time period we discover most archaeological finds, which you can see at Buxton's Museum. A number of flint instruments, knives, a mace, arrowheads, were found along with antler tines and ox bones. All below and Gib Hill are close to a great number of other Neolithic and Iron Age sites making the area around Buxton very special indeed. Some of those sites, no doubt, I'll be making videos about in the future, so subscribe to check them out. Further reading links are available in the description. After this cool experience, I went down to Buxton and visited the Buxton Brewery. I don't do gluten, so I asked for a wheat-free beer, which they had on tap, and was an IPA called Nine Stones. No doubt, named after the Nine Ladies Stone Circle on Stanton Moor, or Nine Stones Close Stone Circle, also known as the Grey Ladies, on Half Hill Moor, both located in the Peak District. The beer was very nice. If you enjoyed this video, you can support my alcoholism by buying me a beer in the description, although please do not feel obliged. Also, check out my Stone Cold Steve Circle Arbolo t-shirt and sweatshirt, available from my online store. If you wear it, you'll be the most Neolithic person in your town. If you like this video, please check out my other Neolithic and Bronze Age videos. I made another video about the Barbrook Stone Circle and Cairns on Ramsley Moor and the High Peak. Like, comment and subscribe and no more climbing ancient earthworks.